Hello viewers, welcome back to class. I'm super super excited to have you guys back to class again. You are welcome to Master Builders Online Academy. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done so. And ensure that you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos. Guys, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and make your necessary comment. But lest I forget, don't forget this principle. Do not entertain any form of distraction as well. Do not skip any part of this video. And if there be any part of this video, you do not understand when you watch it for the very first time, guys. You have a singular opportunity to replay the video over and over and over again until you understand. Yes, you can understand, but pay close attention and do not skip any part of the video. Guys, let's look at what I have for you guys today. On the board, we are asked to show that the maximum bending moment for a simply supported being carrying a uniformly distributed unit is WL squared. Over in this is our solution. Now, guys, the very first thing you must do is to know what a simply supported beam is. Now, guys, a simply supported beam is a beam that is supported at one end with a ruler and at the other end with a pin. Yeah, a simply supported beam is a beam that is supported with a roller at one end and with a pin at the other end. What do I mean? We mean that a simply supported beam is a beam, a beam that is something of this nature. So we have a roller at one end, then we have a pin at the other end. So we call this end A, we call this other end B. This is a simply supported beam that has a span edge. Now, this is a beam without a load. And the load that was mentioned here is a uniformly distributed load, which you have as this. Or sometimes which you can have it this way. They are all the same. Alright? Then this is the UDL, this is the load. Unit per length, let's assume it's kilometer, kilometer per meter. This is the beam. Now understand that for a simply supported beam. The first thing you obtain anytime you are asked to obtain the maximum bending moment or drop bending moment and Schaeffer's diagram is to obtain the support reaction. If this load is acting on this structure, remember what are the possible opposition of this support? Of course, if there is a load here acting downward, these two reactions here they are acting upward in order to resist this load. So, what are the possible resistance that this Supports offer to be able to what make this structure attain an equilibrium. Now, the first thing we do is that we can decide to create the free body diagram like you know it. So, for the free body diagram, this becomes reaction at A, why this becomes reaction at B. A from B is a distance of what L or span of L. Now, the first thing you must understand is that. Anytime you have a simply supported beam that is uniformly distributed across the entire span of the beam, the reaction at A is equal to the reaction at B. Because this flow you have here now is symmetrical to the system. So anytime a simply supported beam is symmetrically loaded, the reaction at both ends, they are equal. Are you here? When a simply supported beam is symmetrically loaded, the reaction at both ends, they are the same. Therefore, all do I do? The first thing you do, like I explained earlier, is that anytime you have a UDL, you must convert it to a point load. And to convert a UDL to a point load, all you simply do is to multiply the load intensity with the span it covers. And now this load cover the entire span. That means the point load here that the equivalent point load of this UDL would have been point load P. Would have got W multiplied by L, and this would have given us W A. This is the point load. Now, this point load is now acting at the center of this beam. It's now acting at the center, which is what this P. It's now at the center, which is a distance of L over 2 from the left and L over 2 from the right. In, from the right. Like I explained earlier, anytime you convert a UDL to a point load, it must act, the point load must act at the center of that span. It will maintain equal distance from both ends. Now, if this is understood, 
All I need to do is, if I understand that for every simply supported beam that is symmetrically loaded, that the reaction at A is equal to the reaction at B, all I need to do is, I need to divide this reaction by 2, so that I can give this reaction A, the portion that belongs to A, and that of B. So all I need to do is, arrow A is equal to arrow B, what? Symmetrically or symmetrical loaded. Alright? So anytime a system is symmetrically loaded, the reaction at A is always equal to reaction at B for a simply supported beam. Therefore, if that is the case, all I need to do R of A is equal to R of B, and both is equal to W L over 2. This is it. There is another way to find this where you now make use of the equations of equilibrium. Are you there? Equations of static equilibrium, some of fx, some of fy, and some of moment, or some of upward forces equal to some of downward forces, or some of forward forces equal to some of backward forces. You can make use of those theories to also obtain this. Are we there? But this is the short method to obtain the support reaction for a simply supported beam that is symmetrically loaded. So if this is understood, the next thing we are quickly going to do is to deduce or generate the moment equation. And how do we generate the moment equation? All you need to do is to come to any of the support because both supports already have equal reactions. So I can come to support A and take a distance of x from A. Are you with me? So take a distance of x from A. Now we can redraw this. Just say consider a session of distance x from A as shown below. Let's assume we want to redraw what we just stated now. This will have given us something like this. This is the load. This is the reaction here, WL over 2. Understand that why this is the reason why you need to find the reaction here. Alright? We already know that this is WL over 2. Or you can decide to just leave it as arrow A so that you don't have it much complex. Just leave it as arrow A. Then we already know that the distance we consider is x, not L. And now this is the load, W kilonewton per meter. Alright? Now this is point A and this is the distance. Now we are taking moment at this point. M x. This is what we have. Now listen carefully. For us to take moment now here, we know that we have two active forces here. One is the reaction. The other is the load. And when I am taking moment at this point, I need to consider this reaction and equally consider the load. But the simplest way to have this done is that the moment equation, the moment here, or the moment equation, mx is equal to moment due to reaction minus moment due to loading. This is the easiest way I explain this aspect. All you just need to do, put down mx is equal to moment due to reaction is arrow A multiplied by what's the distance of arrow A from this point? X. Then minus moment due to loading. Moment due to reaction minus moment due to loading. If you understand it this way, then you are good to go. Okay? So at this point now, all I need to do is that I need to first of all convert this UDF, this loading, to a point load. And when I do that, it will have become W times X. Then I put down W times X. Now, understand that once you convert this load to a point load, have multiplied by X, understand that that point load will now be acting at the center of the distance, which will have divided X into two equal parts to both X. So from here to here, equally is S over 2. So if I am taking moment at this point now, and this is now W times X, what is the distance of W? X from this point is X over 2. So I will multiply this by x over 2. Now I have that this is mx is equal to what is the value of r? r is w n over 2 multiplied by x. Don't forget this is r a. Then minus w x squared over 2. We may call this equation 1. This is the moment equation for a simply supported beam carrying a UDA. Are you there? Now, we understand that we can find moment at any point for this simple supported beam. I can set the final moment at A, 
at B at a distance of 0.5 or half from B or from A or one third of the length from A or two thirds of the length from A or one quarter from A or from B. I can decide to find that. And that is when I begin to take the values of X because this is the standard equation. Now understand that for a simply supported beam, the maximum bending moment, because we are asked to look for the maximum bending moment, the maximum bending moment for a simply supported beam carrying a UDL of course at the mid span. And at the mid span, if this is the mid span, from the mid span to the left is L over 2, and from the mid span to the right is equally L over 2. That means the maximum bending moment will occur at a distance of L over 2 from any of the supports. I mean, from any of the supports, this is where the bending moment, maximum bending moment will occur. But we are going to validate this with another method. So I can decide to just say let x be equal to what? L over 2 substitute. We will get the answer. But I want to solve it in another way. Now understand that when you differentiate bending moment, you obtain shear force equation. When you differentiate bending moment equation, you obtain shear force equation. And at a point where the shear force is equal to zero, you have the maximum bending moment. So what I need to do now is to differentiate this. I need to know that dm x over dx. If I differentiate this moment with respect to x, I'm going to have shear force. And at a point where shear force is equal to zero, listen carefully, at a point where the shear force is equal to zero, that is where I have maximum bending moment. So when I differentiate this now with respect to x, so we have this as dm x over dx is equal to when we differentiate w l over 2 with respect to x, x will disappear. We will be left with w l over 2 because we are differentiating with respect to x and the power of x is 1. But at this point, when we differentiate this with respect to x, we are going to have this as 2 w x 2 minus 1. We are going to have the power of x 1 here all over 2. Okay, so this. And this is equal to zero. Then we are going to have this as WL over 2 is equal to WX. Sorry, minus WX is equal to zero. Now I will make, I'm looking for the value of X. I want to know exactly where X, the value of X that will give me zero. Because I explained earlier that for a simply supported beam carrying a UTL, the maximum bending moment occurs at a distance of L over 2 from any of the supports. Are you there? Now we want to validate how that is true using the actual method. We said that maximum bending moment occur where shear force is equal to zero. And when you differentiate maximum bending moment, you obtain the shear force equation. Now equate that equation you obtain to zero so that you can find x. Now if x gives us 2l over 2, we will substitute into this equation and find the corresponding maximum bending moment at that point. So what we need to do now is to make this sort of formula. We have W x is equal to W L over 2. Now W cancel W x is equal to 2. Now the value we just obtained here now when we put it into this equation whatever outcome we have is the maximum bending moment. Whether it agrees with what we have here or not, whatever we have here is the maximum bending moment because the maximum bending moment occurs where shear force is equal to zero. And to obtain shear force when maximum bending moment equation is given, just differentiate the maximum bending moment equation, you will obtain the shear force equation. That equate that equation to zero and solve for x. That's exactly what we do now. Now we can substitute the value of x into this equation. So I will therefore have m maximum is equal to, in place of x, I will replace it with what l over 2. So I have W L over 2 into X is L over 2, then minus W over 2, L is L over 2. That's X is L over 2, all squared. Now, at this point, this will give me W L squared over 4, minus W L squared over now. When I square 2 here, I have 2 squared, I will have 4. 4 multiplied by 2, I have 8. Now, guys, the LCM of 4. And 8 is 8. So you put down 8 all over. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 2 multiplied by the numerator, we have 2 WL squared minus 8 divided by 8 is 1. And 1 multiplied by the numerator, we still have the numerator as it is. 
Now, 2WU S squared minus 1WU S squared. We will be left with 1WU S squared. Then this will have given us WU S squared all over what it is. This is it. And understand that for a simply supported beam, we have positive moments or two. And positive moments are called sagging moments. Yes, positive moments are called sagging moments. Now, guys, let me quickly give you the things you need to know about simply supported beam. For simply supported beam, the moment at the supports they are zero. Number one. Then number two, the maximum bending moment for a simply supported beam occurs under the loading. Are you there? On that, also understand that for a simply supported beam that is symmetrically loaded or that is carrying a UDF across its entire span, the maximum bending moment occurred at the wingspan. And also understand that when you differentiate bending moment equation, you will obtain shear force equation. And at a point where shear force is equal to zero, maximum bending moment is obtained. So, maximum bending moment occur at a point where shear force is equal to zero. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done so. And ensure that you hit the like button, turn on the post notification bell for all exciting videos, and share this video. You heard me right? Share this video. Make your necessary comment. Don't forget that you need to understand principles to become principal, and you only need to understand boundary conditions to, so that you will not want overstep your boundaries. We love you guys. Thank you for watching. See you guys.